in one of the previous lessons, I promised to do more complex examples of BGP and we will do it, but in order to make it more realistic, we should use NAT, Network Address Translation. In order to do that, you need to know how to configure access lists or in short, ACLs. Let's look at some of the basics behind access lists. I'm going to go through each of these statements here. First, an access control list, ACL, is a list of rules configured on a network device used to filter traffic flowing through that device. It says here that we configure ACLs on network devices. We're going to use routers as examples, although it can be a firewall or a switch or a server, but we'll use routers for the sake of simplicity. Second, and very important, each packet that goes through that device is compared against each rule in the ACL. We said in the first statement that ACLs are used to filter traffic. Well, we will be filtering the traffic based on the parameters that can be found inside packet headers. For example, source IP address, destination IP address, port number, protocol, and so that's what we'll define in these rules. We can say, for example, that we want to block all packets that come from a certain subnet. In that case, we'll say deny all packets whose source IP address is 10, 0, 0 something. And the router where we've configured the list will drop all such packets. Next, if the packet doesn't match the current rule, it's compared to the next one. Let's say a router receives a packet with source IP 1234. And if the first rule is allow packets with source IP 1234, it means that that packet matched with a rule and therefore that rule is applied to that packet. In this case, the packet would go through because the rule said allow. In case that there are, say, five rules before that rule, our packet would be compared against each of those rules. And then when we reach the rule our packet matches, the rule is applied and other rules are practically discarded. Same goes for deny rules. Obviously, if you're denying a packet, it means it will get dropped and therefore the rules that come after the rule it matched with will also not be looked at. The last statement says at the end of the list, there usually is a catch all rule that applies to packets that don't match any of the other rules. And that means that these rules will say any source IP, any destination IP, any port and all possible parameters, whatever they are, this rule applies to every packet. Of course, the packets that matched some of the previous rules will not even get to this final rule, but that's what these catch-all rules are for, to catch any packets that don't fit into any other rule in the list. By default, on Cisco devices, there will be a deny all rule at the end of every list. You can change this by simply adding an allow all rule at the end of your list. Be aware that by doing this, you won't erase the deny all rule. It's just that all of your packets will match the allow rule first, and therefore that rule will be applied to those packets. And the last rule, the deny all rule, will simply never be used. A very important detail is explained here, and this is something my students used to forget the most. They would configure an ACL correctly, but forget to actually apply the list to an interface. So, 
you can configure tens of ACLs on your network device, but they will just sit around and do nothing until you go to an interface and tell that interface that it should filter traffic according to your list. Also, it's super important to configure the right traffic flow direction. You can actually have two access lists on one interface, one ACL applied to incoming traffic and the other one applied to outgoing traffic. These are called inbound and outbound ACLs. Sometimes it's not enough to just figure out the proper flow direction. Sometimes you will also want to think about efficiency. For example, it might be okay to apply a list on the outgoing interface, but if it can be done on the incoming interface and therefore save router resources, you will block the packet before it enters a router and has to be routed. Another thing we want to mention is the two types of ACLs, standard and extended. Standard ACLs can only filter your traffic based on who is sending the traffic. Only on extended ACLs can you define destination, port numbers and protocol. But let's go to examples and it will be clearer from those. In this network right here, we have several LANs. 172.16.0.0, 172.17.0.0, 172.18.0.0, 172.19.0.0, 172.20.0.0, 172.21.0.0, 172.22.0.0, 172.23.0.0, 172.24.0.0, 172.25.0.0, 172.26.0.0, 172.27.0.0, 172.28.0.0, 172.29.0.0, 172.30.0.0, 172.31.0.0, 172.32.0.0, 172.33.0.0, 172.34.0.0, 172.35.0.0, 172.36.0.0, 172.37.0.0, 172.38.0.0, 172.39.0.0, 172.40.0.0, 172.41.0.0, 172.42.0.0, 172.43.0.0, 172.44.0.0, 172.45.0.0, 172.46.0.0, 172.47.0.0, 172.48.0.0, 172.49.0.0, 172.50.0.0, 172.51.0.0, 172.52.0.0, 172.53.0.0, 172.54.0.0, 172.55.0.0, 172.56.0.0, 172.57.0.0, 172.58.0.0, 172.59.0.0, 172.60.0.0, 172.61.0.0, 172.62.0.0, 172.63.0.0, 172.64.0.0, 172.65.0.0, 172.66.0.0, 172.67.0.0, 172.68.0.0, 172.69.0.0, 172.70.0.0, 172.71.0.0, 172.72.0.0, 172.73.0.0, 172.74.0.0, 172.75.0.0, 172.76.0.0, 172.77.0.0, 172.78.0.0, 172.79.0.0, 172.80.0.0, 172.81.0.0, 172.82.0.0, 172.83.0.0, 172.84.0.0, 172.85.0.0, 172.86.0.0, 172.87.0.0, 172.88.0.0, 172.89.0.0, 172.90.0.0, 172.91.0.0, 172.92.0.0, 172.93.0.0, 172.94.0.0, 172.95.0.0, 172.96.0.0, 172.97.0.0, 172.98.0.0, 172.99.0.0, 172.10.0.0, 172.11.0.0, 172.12.0.0, 172.13.0.0, 172.14.0.0, 172.15.0.0, 172.16.0.0, 172.17.0.0, 172.18.0.0, 172.19.0.0, 172.20.0.0, 172.21.0.0, 172.22.0.0, 172.23.0.0, 172.24.0.0, 172.25.0.0, 172.26.0.0, 172.27.0.0, 172.28.0.0, 172.29.0.0, 172.30.0.0, 172.31.0.0, 172.32.0.0, 172.33.0.0, 172.34.0.0, 172.35.0.0, 172.36.0.0, 172.37.0.0, 172.38.0.0, 172.39.0.0, 172.40.0.0, 172.41.0.0, 172.42.0.0, 172.43.0.0, 172.44.0.0, 172.45.0.0, 172.46.0.0, 172.47.0.0, 172.48.0.0, 172.49.0.0, 172.50.0.0, 172.51.0.0, 172.52.0.0, 172.53.0.0, 172.54.0.0, 172.55.0.0, 172.56.0.0, 172.57.0.0, 172.58.0.0, 172.59.0.0, 172.60.0.0, 172.61.0.0, 172.62.0.0, 172.63.0.0, 172.64.0.0, 172.65.0.0, 172.66.0.0, 172.67.0.0, 172.68.0.0, 172.69.0.0, 172.70.0.0, 172.71.0.0, 172.72.0.0, 172.73.0.0, 172.74.0.0, 172.75.0.0, 172.76.0.0, 172.77.0.0, 172.78.0.0, 172.79.0.0, 172.80.0.0, 172.81.0.0, 172.82.0.0, 172.83.0.0, 172.84.0.0, 172.85.0.0, 172.86.0.0, 172.87.0.0, 172.88.0.0, 172.89.0.0, 172.90.0.0, 172.91.0.0, 172.92.0.0, 172.93.0.0, 172.94.0.0, 172.95.0.0, 172.96.0.0, 172.97.0.0, 172.98.0.0, 172.99.0.0, 172.100.0.0, 172.101.0.0, 172.102.0.0, 172.103.0.0, 172.104.0.0, 172.105.0.0, 172.106.0.0, 172.107.0.0, 172.108.0.0, 172.109.0.0, 172.110.0.0, 172.111.0.0, 172.112.0.0, 172.113.0.0, 172.114.0.0, 172.115.0.0, 172.116.0.0, 172.117.0.0, 172.118.0.0, 172.119.0.0, 172.120.0.0, 172.121.0.0, 172.122.0.0, 172.123.0.0, 172.124.0.0, 172.125.0.0, 172.126.0.0, 172.127.0.0, 172.128.0.0, 172.129.0.0, 172.130.0.0, 172.131.0.0, 172.132.0.0, 172.133.0.0, 172.134.0.0, 172.135.0.0, 172.136.0.0, 172.137.0.0, 172.138.0.0, 172.139.0.0, 172.140.0.0, 172.141.0.0, 172.142.0.0, 172.143.0.0, 172.144.0.0, 172.145.0.0, 172.146.0.0, 172.147.0.0, 172.148.0.0, 172.149.0.0, 172.150.0.0, 172.151.0.0, 172.152.0.0, 172.153.0.0, 172.154.0.0, 172.155.0.0, 172.156.0.0, 172.157.0.0, 172.158.0.0, 172.159.0.0, 172.160.0.0, 172.171.0.0, 172.172.0.0, 172.173.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0.0, 172.174.0
if we configured our access list on this interface, that would mean that we would only block these computers from accessing these two computers in this subnet right here. We would still be able to communicate to the internet because we would take this link and then this link and then this link and none of those links or interfaces have any access lists uh, configured on them. So we will still be able to connect to the internet from here. If we were to configure this access list on this interface, however, we would still be able to communicate to this subnet. We would not be able to communicate to the internet, but we would also not be able to communicate with this subnet right here. And from this diagram, we're not really sure how this administrator's console is connected here, but we would probably not be able to communicate to that either. So the correct answer here is this interface is the right one. I think I have a pointer here, okay? So this is the right interface because only on this interface we are specifically targeting the internet and we will be able to communicate to all the other subnets in our network. Let's imagine packets going through this interface and how this access list would actually block them. So we would have a packet sent from one of the computers in this subnet. Obviously the source IP address is going to be 172.16.0 something. Let's say it's 16.0.5, for example. So one of the computers has that IP. They want to go to the internet. Their packet will go through this interface, this interface, and then this router will actually route that packet. It will say, okay, this is the source IP, this is the destination IP, let's say they're reaching udemy.com, for example. So we get the, uh, the IP address of Udemy and we say, okay, um, this router has the uh, IP address of Udemy, it has the route, and then it routes the packet, it sends the packet out the interface, but the interface has this access list configured on it, and it says, okay, let me look at the rules in the list. First rule, deny packets with source IP 172.16.0 something. IP address of this packet is 172.16.0.5, so that parameter from that packet matches this rule. I'm going to apply this rule to that packet and I'm going to discard that packet and therefore this user will not be able to reach Udemy. <laughs> What if some other computer tried to go out to the internet? For example, someone from 172.17.0 something, let's say it's also 5. So once that packet uh, is sent from this subnet, it reaches the router. The router routes the packet, again finds the route to Udemy website, and then it sends the packet. And since this access list inspects all packets that uh, go through this interface, it's going to inspect the packet coming from 172.17 as well. So our packet is going to be compared to the rules. First rule, deny 172.16.0.0. Obviously, we do not belong to 172.16.0.0 in this example, so this rule is not applied to that packet because it simply doesn't match the parameters from the packet. We move to the next rule in this list. The next rule says permit any. Any matches any source IP and therefore this rule will be applied to our packet going from this subnet. One more thing I want to cover before we move on are the different ways to configure ACLs. This is how we did it in our example, but it can be done like this as well. You can also first create your list and then list all the rules inside this uh, special configuration mode right here. You can also create a named list in a, instead of using a number like this. 
And now on to the different rules you can configure here. First of all, there are two main things you can do in an access list. You can permit something and deny something. In this first example, we are permitting and denying an entire subnet. You permit packets coming from a subnet by saying permit. And then you list the network address and then the subnet mask. You don't have to use the exact subnet mask used in that network. You can permit or deny a subset of that subnet by using a more specific mask than that of the real subnet. That's perfectly fine. What a router will do with these lists is it will compare each packet that arrives to the rules inside the list. If the source IP falls into the IP range specified in the rule, the rule will be applied. The router doesn't really check if the mask used in a rule matches the real mask. That being said, we can also allow or block a single IP address. You can do that the same way we handled subnets, only this time we use the slash 32 mask, which in wildcard mode is all zeros. Or you can use this host keyword, which implies that you want to allow or block a single IP address. And so right after the host word, you just list that one IP. Last but not least, there's a way to permit or deny all traffic. And you can also use the all zeros with slash zero mask, which looks like this. Or you can use this keyword any and achieve the, the very same thing. If you thought we were done, you were wrong. There's more. There's a couple of rules you should be aware of when working with ACLs. So let's go through them together. First rule, you can only apply one access list on a given interface for a given direction. Example, you can have ACL 10 on interface 1 for the incoming traffic and ACL 20 on interface 1 for the outgoing traffic. You can't have two ACLs on one interface for incoming traffic, for example. There can be only one. That's a Highlander movie quote. So use that to remember ACL rules. You can't have more than one ACL per interface, per direction. Next rule, whenever a rule is added, it's added to the bottom of the list. This tells you that the order in which you type your commands matters. For example, we said that as soon as a packet matches a rule, that rule will be applied to that packet and all other rules will be disregarded. If you were to first add a rule which allows all traffic to go through, then all packets will match that rule and the rules you add afterwards will never be used. There is a way to insert a rule in between rules already existing in a given list, but this is a general guideline on creating access lists and how it works. Third rule is every list has a deny any rule at the end. We already mentioned this earlier and there's not much to explain here. It's just a fact. Fourth rule is evident from the previous one. If no permit rules are added to the list, it will block all traffic. This is also self-explanatory. That brings us to our fifth rule. An empty list applied to an interface will not block traffic. So even if we have already established that each list has a deny all at its end, if it has no other rules and you apply it to an interface, it won't really do anything. And lastly, this one isn't as intuitive as the previous ones. Traffic generated by a given router will not be blocked by an ACL on that router. Let's look at an example for this one. What we have here are two routers, router 1 and router 2. They're directly connected and their IPs are 10.0.0.1 and 10.0.0.2 respectively. Router 1 
has an access list that denies all traffic coming from any IP address that starts with 10. Now, we can see down here that this list is applied on both directions on Router 1's fast Ethernet interface. This means that this router should block packets that Router 1 both receives and sends that have source IP starting with 10. But this interface also has an IP that starts with 10. So should Router 1 block its own traffic, as we've already established, traffic generated by this router can't be blocked. Traffic simply flowing through this router and it's coming from a 10 dot something network, those packets will be dropped. So let's walk through this example here. First, router 1 tries to ping router 2. That means router 1 will send an ICMP packet to router 2. Remember, IP address of router 1 is 10.0.0.1 and IP of router 2 is 10.0.0.2. Router 1 has an access list saying block every packet whose source IP starts with 10, whether it's coming or going. Now, because of the fact that an ACL will not drop packets generated by the router that should drop them, this time, the ICMP headed towards router 2 will go through. What happens next is router 2 will send the ping back to router 1 and this time router 1 will drop that packet because it matches its ACL rule to block everything starting with 10, which certainly is the case here. So, even though this ping was initiated by router 1 and practically router 2 is only returning it back, it is a new packet which is generated by router 2 and therefore it should be dropped. I really hope this was clear for you. If there are any questions, please post them in the Q&A section. So that's it for the explanation part. Let's go to our exercise.